Great. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Ken Yellowitz. I'm the director of the Dickey Center for International Understanding, and uh, very, very happy to welcome you to a very special presentation today by a special person, a very good friend. Um, I do want to recognize um, the Dickey Center Board of Visitors um, is meeting concurrently and several members of the board are here, but I wanted to introduce uh, Sandy McCulloch, who's been the, uh, the chair of the Dickey Center Board and uh, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful supporter. So Sandy, I just wave your hand and everybody say hi to Sandy. Great. Um, let's see. Uh, the panel, I'm sorry, the, the talk today is, uh, is uh, going to be formally introduced by uh, Professor Daryl Press. Uh, who's the coordinator of our War and Peace Studies program at the Dickey Center. But I asked um, Daryl to just give me a couple of minutes beforehand because uh, I really wanted to say a, a word or two about our speaker today and his wonderful wife, uh, Margot Squire, who are, are both here. But um, Ross Wilson, uh, I've known for many, many, many years as a very good friend and professional colleague. Um, we are both... Uh, veterans along with Margot of, of the core of sort of former Soviet Union specialists uh, and also have a great love for uh, the Caucasus in that part of the world. And um, Ross served as the uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary of State responsible for my neck of the woods when I was in uh, Georgia. And we have many, many, many a battle story to tell of, of very interesting uh, events that we worked our way through. Uh, but a very, very good friend, and I um, uh, just wanted to welcome Ross and Margot. Margot, uh, we worked together uh, when she had a, an assignment. She is also a Foreign Service officer, uh, worked on the assistance program to the countries of the former Soviet Union on, on the democracy building portion. And we were certainly trying to do that in places like Belarus and Georgia, so we work closely together. And she was also a member of uh, something of the board of something called the Eurasia Partnership Foundation, uh, which I am. In fact, I just got back from uh, Georgia. Uh, this is a, a board of an organization that originally uh, began as the Eurasia Foundation, but as a major NGO uh, working on uh, civil society and rule of law projects, primarily um, in the former Soviet Union. So I'm very, very happy, you know, to welcome uh, both of you uh, to Dartmouth. Uh, Margot is a Dartmouth alumna, uh, and I know she's very happy to be back. Um, we had a wonderful session at lunch today with students, several of whom are here, uh, talking about foreign service careers, so it's really good. And one other announcement that I'd like to make, um, on May 18th, a week from yesterday at 7.30, uh, I will be chairing uh, a panel. Uh, we will have uh, two professors, one Bridget Coggins uh, from Dartmouth and also a visiting uh, professor from the University of California at Berkeley. And we'll be talking about um, one of the quote unquote frozen conflicts, which is Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, a disputed area between Armenia and Azerbaijan. And we learned um, in August of 2008 that what we thought were frozen conflicts uh, in Georgia are not. And Nagorno-Karabakh, I think, certainly has the potential uh, to flare up in a, in, in a serious way. So this will be uh, May 18th at 7.30, and I hope uh, all of you can attend. And now I'd like to turn the floor over to Daryl Press. <clears throat> So I'll, I'll be really brief because we came here to listen to Ambassador Wilson. I'm Daryl Press. I'm the coordinator of the Dickey Center's War and Peace Studies program. Um, this is the fourth lecture in a four-part series that we've organized throughout the year on the United States and the Middle East. So at the beginning of the year, we had Ambassador William Rue come out to talk to us about U.S. public diplomacy and the value of those efforts about speaking, you know, speaking to the people of the, the Middle East and the people of the Arab world and not just to their governments. Um, we followed that with Professor Jeremy Pressman, who talked about the very important U.S.-Israel relationship. We had Paul Pilar, a former U.S. national intelligence officer toward the region, talk about the ongoing um, struggle against terrorism. 
And we're ending this series tonight with a terrific event. Um, and our guest, as you know, is Ambassador Ross Wilson, who will be talking to us about another critical relationship for the United States in the re region, the relationship between the United States and Turkey. Um, Ambassador Wilson has had a very long and very distinguished career with the State Department. I believe he served for three decades with the State Department and held a large number of very important posts, including in the embassies in Moscow, the embassy in Prague. Um, he served uh, from 1997 to 2000 as the special advisor to the Secretary of State for the new independent states of the former Soviet Union, and then went and immediately served as the US ambassador to one of those states, namely to Azerbaijan. After a brief stint back in Washington, he then was asked to serve as the US ambassador to Turkey, which he did for three years. And now he is the director of the Dinu Patricio Eurasia Center at the Atlantic Council of the United States, and he's a lecturer at GW. Um, frankly, um, in terms of bringing somebody to Dartmouth who could speak with great insight and frankness about the strains in the U.S.-Turkish relationship and the future of the U.S.-Turkish relationship, um, we couldn't have asked for a better guest than the one we have here today. So please join me in welcoming to Dartmouth Ambassador Ross Wilson. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Daryl. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here uh, in, uh, in Hanover to have the opportunity to speak with you today. I've visited this campus uh, many times, but I've always been an accompaniment uh, with my wife to uh, several different reunions. My wife is in the back, uh, Margot Squire, class of 1979, uh, and uh, two years ago with my son when uh, he was looking at colleges uh, 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 as he was getting ready to leave high school. Um, it's an honor uh, for me to be invited uh, to Dartmouth in my own right. Uh, Ken, thank you very much also for inviting uh, Margot to join. She has always been extraordinarily proud of this institution and her association with it, and it's uh, very clear to me uh, why. Um, it, it's, I'm, I'm also honored to have uh, some representatives from the uh, Board of Visitors here, uh, also see several students that I met with earlier today. Uh, this, is a, this is a good uh, time for students, I think, to be involved in and interested in world affairs. There's a lot going on in the world, uh, and it's an exciting time. My topic this afternoon is uh, Turkey and the United States in a volatile region of the world. That the region is volatile, I think, is pretty obvious to anybody that's opened a newspaper or looked at television news at, on any day over the last 10 years. Uh, less appreciated than the region, I think, are Turkey uh, and the criticality of U.S.-Turkish relations and cooperation for American uh, interests in this part of the world. Uh, I will try over the next few minutes to describe Turkey uh, and ways in which it is changing to talk about Turkey's role in the region and its role with the United States. And I hope to make the case for vigorous leadership by the United States to keep this vital partner uh, with us in the years ahead. But let me begin, as you should always begin speeches, uh, with a story. At a conference on U.S.-Turkish relations a number of years ago, a Turkish scholar related the story of our first contact, if you will. The year was 1800, and uh, the USS George Washington a warship of the fledgling United States of America arrived at Bosporus Strait just outside of Istanbul. The ship and the flag were unfamiliar uh, to the Ottomans. And so uh, the Sultan, Selim III, uh, uh, looked at this flag and reportedly found striking the fact that it had stars in it, that it and the Ottomans' own flag shared representations of, the hev of heavenly bodies uh, to him was an omen of friendship and goodwill. And so he reportedly arranged for the dispatch to the ship's captain, William Bainbridge, uh, a lamb as a symbol of peace, flowers as a symbol of welcome, and most importantly, permission for the ship to enter the inner harbor, the Golden Horn. This makes a wonderful picture and a wonderful start to U.S.-Turkish relations. Unfortunately, it isn't true. Bainbridge did sail the George Washington into the Turkish Straits in 1800, uh, but his ship came from North Africa. There, it was essentially hijacked to Istanbul by agents of the Day of Algiers, 
uh, after Bainbridge had foolishly allowed his ship to come a little too close to the, the guns and the fortifications around the, around the town. His mission to North Africa was ignominious. He went to pay the annual tribute that Presidents Washington and Adams had decided to pay uh, as protection money in order to stop attacks on American merchant shipping uh, by the Barbary pirates. Uh, and that the, the new United States was really essentially powerless uh, to stop or prevent and, 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 or, uh, or to punish the perpetrators. I actually kind of like the true story uh, a little bit better, including its conclusion. Through patient and effective diplomacy in Istanbul, Captain Bainbridge won a measure of political support for the United States from the Barbary Coast's nominal sovereign on this issue of piracy. He secured the release of some 400 hostages held for ransom in Algiers, and he started the painstaking work of building a relationship and developing America's common interest uh, with a country that was important then and is important today as a Middle Eastern and as a European power. And just to add one parenthetical quota, uh, coda to that story, uh, I think about a year and a half ago, the USS William Bainbridge joined Turkish warships off the coast of the Horn of Africa to deal with pirates attacking international oil, uh, oil uh, carrying vessels and other ships in that region. It makes a nice little, nice little story about US-Turkish cooperation, even if Bainbridge's personal involvement was not the most glorious. America's role in, the, in today's world is obviously incomparably greater than it was uh, in 1800. Um, but experience has shown that cooperation with allies, with friends, uh, and with others willing to make common cause on key issues remains and must remain a key and essential objective of U.S. policy in the volatile region of the Middle East and I would say really all around the world. Our modern history with Turkey reflects this recognition. In 1947, President Truman declared it to be the policy of the United States to support free peoples who are resisting attempted subjugation by armed minorities or by outside pressures. He had in mind Greece and Turkey. Uh, before this point, though, Turkey had not been a particular friend of the United States. In no way, uh, in 1947, was it a democratic country, but the Truman Doctrine Marshall Plan aid and admission to NATO in 1952 all reflected Washington's recognition that our interests in regional peace and stability would be served by having Greece and Turkey as members of NATO, whatever their imperfections. Throughout the Cold War, Turkey was important to us because of its location, because of where it was and where it is, astride the Bosporus and the Dardanelles, on the southern shores of the Black Sea, juxtaposed between the Soviet Union and the Middle East, on Europe's southeastern frontier. Uh, the world has changed, but geography, of course, still really matters. And it makes Turkey still a pivotal country. We don't have a map here, but imagine the map in your mind's eye and work around from the east. Iran, Iraq, Syria, and the Middle East. Cyprus, Greece, the Balkans, the Black Sea in Ukraine and Russia beyond, the Caucasus that Ken mentioned, and Central Asia a little bit farther to the east. Do we have another ally that lies so close to so many uh, hotspots that rank so high in America's list of US foreign policy priorities? I would submit that we don't. And close Turkey is. And do the math here. Ankara is about the same distance from Jerusalem as Washington is from Atlanta, which is also about the same distance as Istanbul is from Sarajevo and Pristina, or between London and Berlin for a different kind of comparison. And there are other common interests, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, 
the, the fight against Al Qaeda, which has attacked uh, Turkey and other international terrorist groups, uh, energy issues, and a number of others. But Turkey, Turkey is, so Turkey is important because of where it is. It's also important because of what it is. A strong, stable, democratic, and prosperous ally with an overwhelmingly Muslim population. There is no other country like it in our arsenal of allies and close friends in the world. It has in, in its region an image of self-made success as a country uh, that uh, held off European invasions in the aftermath of World War I uh, and made a country of itself. It has soft power assets, networks and ties in places that matter greatly to American and Western interests and where we're not doing so well. Places like Afghanistan, Pakistan, the Middle East. Turkey is or certainly can be a remarkable asset to the extent that we can find common cause and work together. I'll go back to my Bainbridge story. What I just described makes a nice picture about the prospects for work with Turkey, but is it an accurate account of what Turkey is today and of the extent to which the United States can rely upon it? Much has been written over the past couple of years about a change of axis in Turkey's foreign policy away from Europe and the West and toward greater emphasis on ties with the likes of Iran, Syria, Hamas, Sudan. In the eyes of some in Turkey and in the West, Turkey internally has seemed to be shifting away as well. The present government of Prime Minister Erdogan and the, his Justice and Development Party has been accused of moving uh, to dismantle the country's secular order. Some have charged that Erdogan is a Putin-like authoritarian a threat to Turkish democracy. Recent headlines about trials and long-term detentions of journalists and huge tax fines against uh, the government's major media critic have suggested to some that freedom of the media and freedom of speech are under assault. Before addressing those uh, issues and charges, which are serious and not without basis, it would be useful to just reflect a bit on what are some of the underlying things going on in Turkey. Because it's been, it has changed immensely uh, in very important and dramatic ways over the last decade and especially over the last couple of decades. Uh, extraordinary economic growth and development have led the way. The country's gross domestic product increased from just under $200 billion in 2001 to an estimated 1.3 trillion in 2011, more than a six-fold increase in a decade. Over the same period, per capita GDP has tripled from $3,100 to over $11,000 a year. The export-oriented entrepreneurship of the Anatolian Tigers, a phrase that appeared in the New York Times four or five, six years ago, has produced wealth, jobs, and social change all over the country. Tens of millions of Turks live better now than they have ever lived in th their history. Rising prosperity has changed the country's demographics. In 1990, fully half, 1990, 21 years ago, fully half of the population lived on the farm. 21 years later, three quarters live in urban areas. And the move from the countryside to the city has accelerated over the last four, five, six years. When my wife's family came through Istanbul en route to Moscow in 1966, it had one, Istanbul had 1.7 million inhabitants. It's estimated today to have between 15 and 18 million people. Migration and rapid economic growth make for a large new middle class that is an increasing majority of the Turkish population. With relatively recent roots in the rural past, this new, new class is socially conservative and marked by pious ways of life and mores. It lives side by side 
with a more westernized, uh, with more westernized elite. New York Times reporter Sabrina Tavernes uh, wrote about extremes that jostle on Istanbul streets where miniskirts mix with tightly, tightly tied headscarves and lingerie boutiques stand unapologetically next to mosques. She likened this to two turkeys somehow put together in one. This has given rise to fresh debates about moral issues, headscarves, religious schools, alcohol sales, just to cite a few examples. To state this in a conceptual way, we're at a, univers at a university, at a college, many among this new majority expect or maybe demand more tradition and more Islam in their nation's life than has been the norm for decades. There's an ethnic aspect to this as well. Millions of Kurds who traditionally dominated the country's southeast have joined this move. And it's made the country's Kurdish issue now a national one, not just a regional one. And that leads me to politics. This new majority is a powerful force for political change. Uh, it is altering the landscape and the character of who runs Turkey. The beneficiaries and drivers of this have been Prime Minister Erdogan and the, his Justice and Development Party, or AKP, uh, uh, as its uh, Turkish initials. The AKP promotes itself as a mass big tent and above all a modern party that includes a pious wing, a nationalist wing, a liberal wing, even a Kurdish wing to tap into and exploit uh, the political currents that these broader changes that I referred to have unleashed. The AKP has espoused ideas and implemented policies to appeal to each of those constituencies. Its strategy has been a huge political success uh, for it. In 2002, uh, the AKP won the largest number of seats in the Turkish parliament with 34% of the vote. It got 47% to win a second term in 2008, and it seems poised to, to win 45 to 50%, or maybe even somewhat more, in the parliamentary elections that take place one month from today. That would make it Turkey's first term, first government, first party to win a third term in the country's history. Of course, Turkey's picture is more complicated than this, and go back to what I said uh, about some of the questions that have been raised. As I suggested earlier, some Turks fear a chipping away of the secular regime and of institutions that have underpinned Turkish democracy. Others cheer this. Some fear the checks and balances that have brought stability uh, to the country are being dismantled, while others want to use the Turkish, firm, uh, Turkish term, institutions of tutelage that, have, that over Turkish democracy to be abolished. Lurid accounts in the media have appeared about wiretapping, about secret videos of political opponents' indiscretions, uh, all provoking worry among Turks about their privacy and about where, where politics might be headed. But others note, that those doing this worrying now didn't object so much when those same institutions of control and repression were used against others. Suffice it to say that the culture of freedom in Turkey is still thinner uh, than in much of the rest of Europe. The Turkish state retains powers that are not commonplace among many other democracies. Authoritarian excesses put in place long before the present government came to, came to power are not gone and they're not going away anytime soon. Some of you have probably heard about alleged plots to overthrow the government that has led to uh, recent arrests of hundreds of people, including a substantial number of Turkish uh, 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 recently retired generals and even, uh, even some active duty senior officers. What the perpetrators reportedly planned and the government's handling of this, uh, I think, both reflect the persistence of an authoritarian past of elements 
of Turkey's authoritarian past that remain today. What are some of the foreign policy implications of this, for, in particular for the United States? A couple of points stand out. First, this new Turkish majority is instinctively, or is less instinctively attracted to the West and to the United States than the Turkish mainstream has been since the 1950s and 1960s. I don't think it's exactly as anti-American as some polls and news articles portray, but this is a problem. It is something. Uh, that we have to work on and calibrate our policies toward Turkey and on matters relating to Turkish interests with, with this in mind. Getting our regional policies right is one essential thing. How we express ourselves on Turkey's, some of these domestic demons still rattling around in Turkish politics also plays into these things because one of the institutions of tutelage in the minds of many Turks' eyes is the United States. And that, that presence and that activism on domestic politics, sensitive in any country, is especially acute in Turkey. Second, at a mass level, the, the country feels itself to be more successful than at any time in 100 years, or maybe 200, or maybe 300. How long did we talk about the sick man of Europe? A long time before World War I. This confident Turkey now insistently demands a place for itself at the international table in a way that it didn't even six years ago when I arrived in Ankara to take up duties as American ambassador. On issues ranging from Iran to Israel-Palestine, from Afghanistan to Bosnia to the G20, of which Turkey is a member, Turks seem determined not just to let things play out but to be actors. Turkey's foreign minister, Ahmet Davidoglu, who's a, a personal friend of mine, described to me what, what his image was. He said, when, when the sentences are written about the international events that are of interest to our country, we want to be the subject of those sentences, not the direct object. That, that crystallized uh, this aspiration for me. And the aspiration to be a player regionally is not partisan, or certainly not only partisan. Ankara's newly active regional role isn't only about the ambitions of Erdogan or Foreign Minister Davidoglu, although it does reflect those ambitions uh, like anywhere else. It's also what citizens want. It's what they expect of their government, and the government is responding. In my opinion, this is not a shift of axis. This is not neo-Ottomanism. Uh, perhaps more than its constituents, the government recognizes that its successes and that its influence in the region are in significant measure a function of the country's relationship with the United States and with Europe, uh, of its uh, eastern and western character. To the extent that we can find ways to work with that Eastern character, as well as with the Western character, more effectively we can help preserve that Western character and take advantage of Turkey's strengths, those networks and ties that I referred to earlier in regions where we're not doing so well and where we need help, we need a better understanding and we need to find more effective ways of acting. Just to apply this a little to the Middle East, Turkey, like a lot of countries, maybe to some extent like the United States, reacted in contradictory and mostly cautious ways to the Arab Spring uprisings uh, that have taken place over the last several months. Prime Minister Erdogan was one of the first to call on uh, President, e Egyptian President Mubarak to step down, but he took a little longer to get on the right side of history, to use a phrase that a number of uh, Americans have used in calling for change in Libya and Syria. Ankara was preoccupied with its powerlessness really to protect some 25,000 Turkish workers in Libya before uh, the trouble started there. And it wanted, I think, to get them out of the way before 
uh, the, the push to remove Gaddafi and all of the difficulty that, that Turks could see would flow from that really got underway. Turkey uh, wants to see Syria as a, a freer and more democratic place. It is terrified, and, that, and I, I, use that, I don't use that word lightly, about the prospects that Syria may implode and that unlike Egypt, there won't be any glue to hold it together after it implodes. And that the, what will flow from that uh, will be sectarian and regional bloodletting, much like uh, what happened in Iraq, under different circumstances, of course. And that that could affect the whole of the Levant, including uh, Turkey, or at least significant parts of its population. Turkey did indulge itself in, in the idea, as did some in America, uh, that Assad might maybe be a reformer. They probably, Turks probably overestimate their influence in Syria. Uh, but my guess is that its finger on the pulse, on that Syrian pulse, is probably a pretty good one, one that we would be well advised to, uh, to listen to as, and, and strategize with as we figure out what will be the right and the most effective paths. And I think generally Washington has acted, uh, uh, has acted in that spirit. Is Turkey a model? for others in the Middle East? This is something that's been talked about recently in Washington. Should we put, its, uh, it, uh, should we put this uh, secular, democratic, moderate Islam, to use that phrase, another that Americans uh, frequently uh, use, should we put that forward as a model for the region, for, for Tunisia, for Egypt, uh, for Syria, Yemen, Bahrain, others? I don't know. Turks themselves don't like that term. They don't like to be talked about as a model. Uh, Turkey's own democratic development uh, has, as I noted, been very complicated and is still very complicated. In any case, isn't done. The circumstances in Turkey and in each one of these countries very different. Uh, Ken and I had the opportunity a little bit earlier to talk to World Bank President Robert Zellick, who was on campus to give a talk at the Tuck School. And, and the phrase that I liked of his, he said, There's, there are these waves crashing on the rocks throughout the Arab world, but in each of the places the rocks are a little different, and the wave is a little bit different, and the impact, the implications, for that matter, the causes are a little bit different. And if you think about it as one thing that's happening, you're probably making a mistake. Other issues around uh, Turkey, uh, I think, are also ones, as in the Middle East, that, that draw us together where we have to find ways to work together. We have to find commonalities of interest and where there are commonalities of interest. Iran, for those of you that follow the news, big flashpoint in U.S. and crisis point in U.S.-Turkish relations in 2010, uh, the culmination of which was Turkey's no vote against uh, UN Security Council sanctions in June last year. Neither of us wants to see a nuclear Iran. Neither of us wants war. Turkey has contacts we lack. It's had an embassy for the last 30 years, and we have been blind. Uh, our leaders had a breakdown. We need to not let that happen again. Both our countries also want a strong, stable, secure, and united Iraq. If there was anything that dominated my three years, it was that problem in a whole lot of different respects. The upshot was that by 2008, Turkey had made itself a full partner in what we were trying to do in Iraq and an effective partner of the Maliki government, even though it doesn't, arguably doesn't like the Maliki government all that much, it has, it has given a lot of support and assistance to that country. Both our countries want a stable Balkans for Bosnia and Kosovo to succeed and to find ways to reconcile themselves with, with Serbia and for Serbia to rec reconcile itself with the new geography in the Balkans. And Turkey has been hugely active in the Balkans 
over the course of the last year and a half or two years at a time when the United States and the European Union have been largely passive. Our countries are concerned about proliferation, drug trafficking, and trafficking of persons in the Black Sea, and we've been working together on that. Both our countries uh, uh, want to see uh, peace and stability in the Caucasus, to see Nagorno-Karabakh resolved, to see Georgia as a secure, uh, as a secure country with a secure future for itself, including vis-a-vis uh, -vis Russia. We can elaborate on some of these specific issues in the discussion, um, but to repeat one of my main themes, we have commonalities of interest on almost all of the uh, issues around Turkey's periphery and, and that are important to Turkey and important to the United States in that part of the world, we have to find ways to work with Turkey on these, both to advance those specific goals and to ensure that we have and maintain a strong uh, steady relationship uh, with Turkey. Let me conclude uh, with four thoughts. First, Turkey's emergence as a prosperous, democratic, and stable country that's active in its region and in the world reflects, in addition to Turkish heavy lifting over many years, the success of American and European efforts going all the way back to the 1947 Truman Doctrine, Marshall Plan aid, and everything that flowed from that. That's something that we should be proud of. And as we, we look out at an unstable and uncertain greater Middle East, this history, with all its ups and downs, detours, coups, excesses, and other problems, I think is worth reflecting on in terms of how we approach uh, the current big set of problems. Second, as one thinks about the region where Turkey and the Levant come together and the issues that affect U.S. and transatlantic interests, Turkey is no less important today than it was 60 years ago when it joined NATO. Again, the backdrop for me is trouble in the Middle East whose, whose future evolution is fraught with risk uh, that, that are extremely difficult to predict now. Third, while the ultimate destination of the changes and transformation that Turkey has embarked upon is not clear, the United States and Europe have a profound interest in keeping Turkey close with us. Is we should not allow differences to slide into enmity uh, and uh, have to do all we can to ensure, as Secretary uh, Gates uh, once put it, that uh, we work to coalesce with our allies like Turkey and divide our adversaries and not vice versa. I think that's the right strategy. Fourth, uh, for the students here especially, Turkey is a really interesting and important country. And I encourage you to look more closely at it. When I was in college uh, and deciding what I was going to specialize in, I picked Russia, or Russian and, and Soviet studies, in part because it was obviously the most important country in the world. It was the one that could destroy uh, our country and our way of life during the Cold War. We live in a multipolar world now, um, but, uh, and, but I think there will be three, four, five countries that will be really pivotal for the development of, uh, of various regions in the world and really pivotal for how key issues that are high priorities for America develop. Turkey is one of those. With that, let me close. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'll be happy to, uh, to respond to your questions and comments. I say it again? Is this working? <laughs> it is? Okay. Um, I asked um, if Ross could comment on the Armenian genocide and whether it was an important factor in U.S.-Turkish relations. Um, the, uh, 
the issue of um, whether the United States Congress will adopt a resolution or opine on the as one of events um, is a big issue in U.S. Turkish relations. Every several years, there's a move in Congress by um, uh, by the Armenian diaspora and, and its uh, friends and, and allies, in particular in the House of Representatives, to put this resolution forward. Every April, uh, the President of the United States has issued a proclamation on those historical events, um, colloquially referred to as the Armenian Side Resolution. Uh, every president since Reagan, who was the first to make a proclamation at all, have talked about what happened, but they haven't used that particular word. Uh, and President Obama, as a candidate, pledged to use the word. Um, what he did, what he has done in practice in, in office, has to he's used the Armenian words, um, which I and I can't remember what they are right offhand, but he uses literally uses the Armenian words in Armenian uh, to uh, uh, as a uh, as a way to pay respect to Armenians who feel deeply and emotionally, uh, uh, from their point of view, for very good reasons about a terrible tragedy that affected lots and lots of Armenian citizens of the Ottoman Empire uh, without doing undue damage or running undue risks with Turkey um, uh, where this issue is uh, among the hottest of hot potatoes. Uh, we, uh, when, I was in, when I was ambassador, the issue came before the House. Um, the, the House Foreign Affairs Committee approved the resolution. Um, this was 2006, I believe, um, uh, October 2006, seven. And anyway, it was Iran. Iraq was like really big business, and and the executive branch concluded that it, we it, we simply could not run the risks to our operations in Iraq of this. And it was actually in that context in which Secretary Gates said, at a time of great difficulty for the United States and the world, we should be. Uh, we should be coalescing with our allies and dividing our adversaries, not the other way around. And this, this is, this is a, a big divider. The last thing I think to say on the issue is, um, is that it, is, it has become, over the last six years or so, a topic of regular and increasingly um, honest discussion in Turkey. And that's to my way of thinking, probably ought to be what's the underlying goal behind um, reasonable Armenians on this issue, that Turkey Armenia too, uh, but especially Turkey have a more, uh, a more direct conversation about these terrible events that in a sense the country kind of turned its back on. And, and that's not my characterization, that's a characterization of a very senior Turkish official who, who has supported efforts to, to sustain this conversation even though he's not been able to engage it in himself because it's political poison. Yes, sir. Uh, two militarily related questions. One. As I understand it, the Turks either introduced or first voted for the no-fly zone against the troubles in Libya uh, at this point. And then going back in time, there's quite going back in time, there's quite a bit of controversy apparently as to whether during the Iraq War we could use Turkish territory and bases to have a northern front against the Iraqis, and that allegedly, now you know. This was turned down, and I just wanted if, if those two military issues, you could give us a little background on, on sure. what's going on. Um, on the Libyan on the Libyan side, uh, the the Turks were very hesitant on the issue of a no-fly zone. Um, I would say extremely hesitant, actually. Prime Minister Erdogan publicly uh, assailed the idea, said NATO should have no such role, didn't want it to happen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, at some point, uh, I, and, and he said that, I was in Ankara when he said this, it was about March 10th, I think, or 11th, 12th, something like that. Uh, within a week, Turkey's position had changed. 
Um, and there were several things that changed its position. One was 25,000 Turks had been largely evacuated out of the country, out of harm's way. And that's, you know, that's something you probably want to take into account when you make statements about uh, things like no-fly zones. Um, he, in addition, the Arab League had passed a resolution uh, calling for the establishment of a no-fly zone. Um, the UN Security Council passed a resolution calling for one, and Turkey voted for it. There's a sequence here of things that got put together by Washington to bring around. It had the effect of bringing Turkey around on this, but there were other things, uh, other things going on as well. Uh, at present, Turkey it does not participate in enforcing the no-fly zone, and it is not running any of the combat missions that are that are uh, intended to uh, protect civilians and in and, and so doing, uh, effectively speaking, uh, support the insurgency. Uh, but it is part of the naval blockade uh, that is prevent in the Mediterranean that's preventing the flow of supplies into the government. Uh, and it has run a number of humanitarian missions to various uh, Libyan ports uh, to deliver humanitarian supplies and take, take help get people out. So it's actively involved. It's ca it was ca very cautious to begin with, uh, and I think it remains so now. But in this in this kind of humanitarian piece, while generally supporting the NATO effort, and and one other piece, I, I think Turkey may have may have. Uh, become more interest, uh, more supportive of this NATO no-fly role when when it saw that it was going to happen. In, in part because the Security Council was calling for it and the Arab League was calling for it, they didn't want to be left out. And that's the segue to Iraq. Um, in March 2003, the Turkish government put a motion before the Parliament to authorize. American forces to enter Turkey, transit across southern Turkey, and invade Iraq from the north. Um, the resolution failed. Uh, it actually had a it had a plurality of votes, but because of the, the peculiar voting rules they have, it 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 didn't pass. And as a result of that, the um, uh, the a, a large American con military contingent that had been for days, if not weeks floating in waters off the Turkish coast in the eastern Mediterranean, waiting for this resolution to be passed, uh, they got diverted and, and ultimately came up from the south. Uh, there, have, there are some who have, who have made, and, uh, including Secretary Rumsfeld, uh, who believed that the, that, the, uh, that the absence of a kind of a pincer of, of a movement from the south and the movement from the north is one of the things that led to the insurgency. I, I don't know. I've talked to a lot of other p military people who think who don't agree with that proposition. Um, but but uh, uh, but the the effect of that Turkish decision was then for several years they kind of dialed themselves out of Iraq policy on a country that is obviously a lot closer to their borders. It's on their borders, and, and it's a lot more central to their um, uh, foreign, uh, uh, foreign political and security policies. They, and, they, and I think as they come back to Libya, as they looked at Libya, they didn't want to repeat that experience. And it took a long time, years, to, to get out of that hole and get to a position on Iraq where, where Turkey could, could be and, and became actively involved. And, and that was a lot, of, a lot of what I did together with my counterparts in, in Baghdad to get that fixed. Yeah. I wonder if you could uh, shed some light on the current political conflict within Turkey. Uh, we, in the West, talk of uh, military coups, but in fact, my understanding is that the military has a constitutional power to be able to remove parties and governments that it perceives as becoming too secular. And um, in fact, they have had done, exercised that, I believe, more than once against Erdogan. And uh, now Erdogan is, is uh, arresting and prosecuting former members of the government and military and some current members uh, becoming. What can you say to that? Sure. 
Um, there's a lot of other domestic controversies, but I'll, I'll sort of ta speak to the one that you mentioned. Um, there are some in the military who believe that the Constitution either implicitly uh, provides for them the right to intervene in domestic political affairs or that they have the right themselves anyway. The Constitution, of course, says no such thing at all. Um, and uh, and um, the, the Turkish body politic does not accept that the military has that role to intervene to overthrow the government. And it's not just the AKP. Uh, it includes the Republican People's Party, the Nationalist Party. None of the major political parties accept or recognize that military role, in part because the leaders of all those parties were in, put in jail in 1980 after, after the, last, uh, the last coup. Um, the military. Uh, After the intervene in uh, in the late the nineteen nineties to orchestrate the resignation of then Prime Minister Erbakan, um, it worked with it, but it worked it, it didn't send the tanks out to do that. It worked through uh, it worked through political allies. We 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 could say, um, and and but its action is often referred to postmodern coup. In 2007, the military attempted to intervene again, this time in the, uh, in the election of uh, the Tur Turkish president by the, by the parliament. The ruling party put forward the then foreign minister, Abdullah Gul, as its candidate. A couple of days later, uh, the Turkish general staff put a memorandum on its website that had a lot of stuff in it, but the punchline was it, it was it opposed uh, election as well as a candidacy for office. The interesting thing that came from that was were demonstrations all over the country, uh, hundreds of thousands of people carrying little sort of placards that read that it came the thing interesting the interesting for the uh, opposed a lot of websites. It's web on MRF, Turkish uh, couple of days. Candidate Gul or Abdullah Foreign forward the party ruling party the, by the by the by president of Turkish uh, the, of election um, in time again being to intervene to the the seven thousand two in modern my post referred to often it's at and, and um, we could be we, political uh, it uh, worked through to do that. Tanks and it, it, but it, it, it worked um, minister of then nation focused or to 90s, 1990s. The men in the late it, Ghoul attempted to minister, minister attempted to Ghoul in the late. The 1990s to or orchestration of then um, it, it but it it then the tanks do that through uh, uh, it political we 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 could um, and and it's often referred to postmodern coup in 2007 the military intervene again in time. In the uh, election of uh, the, the Turkish president by the by the, the ruling party forward the foreign Abdullah candidate a couple of days later, uh, Turkish staff on its website had a lot in a punchline was in a post uh, uh, candidacy for. The interesting thing that came out read that was placards, placards, sort of little thing carrying people, thousands of people, of thing, thing, of thousands of people carrying little sort of placards that read that came. The interesting thing, the 
uh, for the seat. I can't oppose, uh, I'm opposed on what punchline I've got a lot of websites. Web on MRF, Turkish job a uh, couple of days. Right? Candidate Abdullah Foreign Forward, the party ruling party by the, by the by president of Turkish uh, the election uh, in the time again being to intervene. The military, seven thousand tooth in modern my post refer to it's at and, and um, we could see as we political uh, it uh, works through do that tanks and it, it but it it were um, then nation focus or to 90s team now the in the late ghoul attempted minister minister attempted ghoul in the Late the 1990s to orchestration, then uh, it worked, but it it then the tanks do that. Uh, it, it political as we 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 could uh, um, and and it's often referred to postmodern coup. In 2007, the military intervened again. And time Time in uh, election, uh, the Turkish president by the by the, the ruling party forward the foreigner Abdullah candidate candidate uh, Turkish jam on its website. A lot in a punchline was in a post uh, uh, candidacy for. Uh, the interesting thing that came out read that was records, plot of old, sort of little thing, carrying people, thousands of above, thing, ghoul, the melanch, the melanch, ghoul, thing, of thousands of people, carrying little sort of placards that read that it came. The interesting thing for uh, for the see can't oppose, uh, oppose on punchline at a lot. Websites, web on MRF, Turkish job, uh, a couple of days, right? candidate Abdullah Foreign Forward, the party ruling party the, by, the, by the president of Turkish uh, the election uh, in the time again, being to intervene. 7,000 tooth in modern. My post referred to it's at and, and um, we could see as we political uh, it works uh, through do that. Tanks and the, it, but it it were. Um, then nation focus or to 90s teen in the late attempted minister it will candidate as we candidate as we minister attempted in the late The 1990s to or orchestration, then uh, it worked, but it, it then the tanks do that through uh, uh, it political. Well, we could, um, and, and it's often referred to postmodern coup. In 2007, the military intervened again in time. In uh, uh, election, uh, the Turkish president by the by the, the ruling party forward the foreigner Abdullah right, a couple of days uh, a Turkish jaf on its website. Had a lot in a punchline was in a post uh, uh, candidacy for. Uh, the interesting thing that came out read that was placards, plot of old, sort of little thing, carrying people, thousands of thing, ghoul, inch, the military, the military, inch, ghoul, thing, of thousands of people, carrying little sort of placards that read that it came. The interesting thing, the for the uh, seat, can oppose uh, uh, opposed on punchline at a lot of websites. Web on MRF, Turkish job, uh, 
a uh, couple of days after Abdullah foreign forward the party ruling party by, the, by the president of Turkish uh, the election uh, in time again being interviewed to seven thousand tooth in modern my post referred to it's at, and, and um, we could see political uh, it uh, works to do that tanks and it, it but it it were um, then nation because or to 90s the in the late tempted minister It was sweet candidate thing got a lot in the late got a lot in the late thing candidate sweet it, Minister attempted the 1990s to orchestration that uh, um, it worked, but it, it and the tanks do that. Through, uh, uh, it political we could um, and and it's often referred to postmodern. In 2007, Terry intervened again. Time in, in uh, election, uh, the, the Turkish president by the by the, the ruling party forward the foreigner Abdullah. A couple of days, uh, Turkish staff put on its website, and a punchline was. And oppose uh, uh, candidacy for, for office. The interesting thing that, that came out read that was Packard's plot of little, sort of little thing carrying people, thousands of people, ghoul interest in the military sweep, uh, the current The Melian Ghoul of thousands of people carrying little sort of placards that read that. The interesting thing, the odd for the sea, a candle, an opposed line, punchline at websites, web on half, Turkish job, a couple of days. Abdullah foreign forward the party ruling party by the by the president of Turkish election um, in time again being to interview Terry seven thousand tooth in modern my post referred to it's at and, and um, we could see political uh, it uh, through do that tanks and it, it but it it were um, then nation because or to nineties the tempted minister it were candidate thing in the late Got a lot of sweet little canter coup coup or a can little sweet got a lot in the late thing can and it minister attempted the nineteen nineties to orchestration then. Um, it worked, but it, it, it and the tanks do that. Uh, it, it political, we, we could, uh, um, and, and, and it's often referred to postmodern. In 2007, Terry intervened again, again time, time in the uh, election, Turkish president by the by the. The ruling party forward the foreigner of Abdullah, a couple of days, uh, Turkish Jaff put on its website, and a punchline was an opposed uh, of those candidacy for office. The interesting thing.
thing I read that was backwards, plot of gold serving, carrying people, thousands of ghoul inch the military. It came little host, little strip, post, little came the the melt. Ghoul of thousands of people carrying. Sort of placards that read that. The interesting thing, the uh, for the sea, uh, uh, an opposed on punchline at websites, web on half, Turkish uh, couple of days, Peter Abdullah Ford forward, the party ruling party by, the, by the president of Turkish election uh, in time again, meaning to interview 7,000 tooth in modern. modern referred to tough. it's at and, and um, we could see political uh, it uh, worked through do that tanks and the t it but it it worked um, then nation or to 90s teen the tempted minister it candidate thing in the late had a lot of us we were can little foreign terror tank Tanks. Military foreign little who were a candidate. We had a lot in the late thing. Candidate minister attempted. To the 1990s to or orchestration. Then um, it, but it. It tend to do that through uh, uh, in political. We could, um, and, and it's often referred to modern. In 2007, we intervene again in time in the election. The Turkish president by the by the, the ruling party forward. The Couple of days, uh, uh, Turkish Jaff put on its website and a punchline was an opposed uh, uh, candidacy for uh, uh, the interesting thing that I read that was backwards, plow serving, carrying people, thousands of ghoul inch the military. The Timur it can't host those little or um I'm in the website red or red or website I'm in um little sort of post can uh, the the mel inch ghoul Of thousands of people carrying little sort of placards that that the interesting the for the sea uh, uh, an opposed on punchline that it's well on half Turkish uh, a couple of days later Abdullah forward the party ruling party by the by the president of Turkish election uh, time again meaning to interview seven thousand tooth in modern modern Referred to often, it's at and, and we could see political. Uh, it uh, worked through do that, and it, it, but it it worked. Um, then nation focused to 90s, the attempted minister, it, candidate thing in the late a lot of us. We were candidate who, who, 
foreign territory. Tanks, um, it's when the it's when the uh, tanks military for who who are a candidate. We had a lot in the late thing, candidate minister attempted. The 1990s to orchestration then uh, it worked, but it, it, it do that through uh, it political we, we could and, and, and it's, it's often referred to modern. In 2007, we intervene again. Uh, election Turkish president by the, the by the, the ruling party forward their Abdullah a couple of days uh, uh, Turkish staff on and a punchline and an opposed uh, uh, candidacy for office. The interesting thing that was Packard's plow serving carrying people thousands of ghoul inch the mill uh, the timmer. It can post those little in the website or bed tempted the man post man post the tempted red or website in little those of it can the the inch ghoul of thousands of people carrying sort of placards that the interesting the for uh, for the see uh, uh, opposed on punch line that on the half Turkish couple uh, of days or Abdullah forward the party ruling by the by the by president of Turkish election uh, time again being to interview seven thousand two in modern modern referred to often it's at and, and we could see political uh, it, uh, through do that it but it it were uh, then nation to 90s the minister it were candidate thing in the late a lot of we a candor who who for tanks um and that it's tempted on the uh it minister and the tennis And the uh, it being on attempted its web um, tanks to hear foreign who, who are a candidate. We had a lot in the late thing, candidate the 1990s to focus nation, then uh, it worked, but it. It do that through a uh, uh, political week, and and it's often referred to modern. In 2007, the interview again time uh, election Turkish president by the by the ruling party forward their delegate. Uh, Turkish jam 
and a punchline was in a post uh, of candidacy for uh, the interesting thing that, that was backwards, serving, caring people, thousands of Of Google and the Mel uh, the camera. it can't Google's little in the website or bad. Post man on the street, ruling sir, ruling sweep on the man, post the red or website in the little sort of that came in the the inch ghoul of thousands of people carrying placards that the interesting the for the sea of the post on punchline at half Turkish couple of days. Abdullah forward the party by the, by the by president for Turkish election uh, time again to interview seven thousand two in modern refer to it's at and, and we could see political uh, work through do that it, but it it worked um, then nation focused to 90s the candidate thing in the late they had a lot of candor Tanks, um, it's wet, tempted to uh, it then the tennis jersey on it, uh, Venic, uh, Venic on it. Mr. And the uh, it tempted to its wet, um, tanks, tear for who, who are. A candidate a lot in the late thing, candidate the 1990s to the station, then it, it worked, it, but it it do that through a political we could say, and, and it, it's often referred to. Modern. In 2007, we interviewed again time uh, election Turkish president by the by the party forward the Abdullah. A couple of days, uh, uh, Turkish Jan half put in a punchline. In a post uh, of candidacy for uh, the interesting thing that, that was backwards, plying, carrying people, thousands of people, of the ghoul, inch, the military. It came to Google's little in the website or read the post as we ruling certain minister in two holidays. The those holidays in two minister certain ruling as we post the red or website in little that came to the the mill inch ghoul of thousands of people carrying placards that. The interesting thing for uh, the sea uh, uh, of the post line was punchline at half Turkish uh, Abdullah forward the party by the, by the president for Turkish election uh, time again to interview 7,000 in modern, modern referred to it's at and, and we could see political uh, 
works to do that. It, but it, it worked. Then nation focus to 90s, 1990s. The candidate thing in the late battle. A lot of cancer for terror tanks. Um, it's attempted to uh, send the team on it. Uh, minister. The military. Who? Who? Party. The military. Minister. Uh, on on it. Uh, it attempted to web um, tanks to foreign or a candle out in the late thing candidate the 1990s to focus nation then it worked but it it do that through uh, political we could and, and it's referred to as modern. In 2007, we in time uh, election Turkish president by the by the forward there Abdullah uh, uh, Turkish Jaff. And a punchline was in a post uh, uh, for uh, uh, interesting th that, that was backwards, playing, carrying people, thousands of of the ghoul inch. Uh, It came a little in the website or read the post now as we ruling certain two holidays. The minister, foreign minister, the holiday in two certain ruling post.